I'm at Tubo George and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you. See, listen, the truth is sweet. <laughs> it's good. I was so excited sharing what I was sharing with you yesterday because because I see it. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Are you ready to make your demands now? Say this with me. Say, Father, today I receive my daily bread. It's coming to me now. Angels, go bring that which is mine for today. Today's portion, it's coming to me now. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, a miracle is taking place in your life. Today, your needs are met. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. David said, may the Lord bless you out of Zion. Wonderful prayer, wonderful prayer. And as in prayer, I pray for you today. Let God bless you out of Zion. Hallelujah. Now, let's, let's, let's just go into today's broadcast. Father, we bless you. You are so good. You are so full of love. And, and Lord, even right now, you are releasing understanding to everyone. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You are, you are causing us to ride on the high places of the earth with your truth. Hallelujah. And we give you praise for this, Lord. Every body is lifted right now. Yokes are being destroyed by the power of your truth. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Praise God. Now, I, I remember on Monday, I told you to turn to the book of John, John chapter 15. We, we didn't deviate. We're still talking about things concerning salvation. So I just spent the two days telling you how financially God has made every provision that you would require in your life. The problem most times is men, see, the hand of man. God's hands are not short, but man's hands can be made short. Not because God cannot move them. Now, there, are, there are many times God will instruct someone concerning you and they forget or they, they, they procrastinate. Or You see, that's why the Bible says, first of all, prayer should be made for all men. See, for all men. Why? That they all come under the influence of God's Spirit and they will act on a daily basis under the influence of God's Spirit. Now, if we all are functioning according to the instruction of the Spirit of God. You will now understand what the unity of the body of Christ is. The unity of the body of Christ is not also, you know, each one of us respecting one another. No, that's not how it works. The unity, the perfect unity of the body is established when we all pay attention to what the Spirit of God is saying. Now, in that way, we will not consider, you, you know, you know, you can have issues with someone, right? You know, someone may, may hurt you, someone may offend you, and then you're, you're upset, you say, oh, look, I'm not going to talk to this person again. And then you go home, and then you set your heart to pray. And say, so, Holy Spirit, you pray in the Spirit. And then the Lord said, you see that person that you say, you're not going to talk to again. I'm giving you a message to go give him right now, and you will go. Lord. He offended me. Yes, but I'm sending you a message to go tell him that I have blessed him. And I'm going to, next week, I'm going to bring an opportunity to him. Must I go? Yes, you've got to go. You know, I'll obey you. Yes, I know you'll obey me. That's what I'm sending you. Okay. So you gather yourself, straighten that your squeeze face, and go to the person and say, you know, you really offended me, oh. If not God, yes, yes. That's it. of course we are connected by God. It's because of God we are all connected. He said, "Yeah, but but you know, God gave me a message for you." So what's the message? 
No, he didn't say I should come and tell you that you would die. He said I should tell you that he has blessed you and next week an opportunity is going to come your way. You're like, oh, really? Oh, please just hug me. <laughs> see, see, reconciliation takes place by the word of the Lord. So all these things we do, you know, people quarrel, they get somewhere, a third party to go and intervene. And it's because, see, we have silenced the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. How do you get angry and then you sleep and wake up and pray in other tongues and, and expect a miracle? And then you're still angry the second day. And you think of that person and thoughts are like, ah, wicked. Ah, oh, oh. You, you still carry those thoughts in your heart. And then you pray again and expect a miracle. Brothers and sisters, you are not praying. You are not. God is not hearing you. And you, know, you are not expecting anything. Jesus said it. When you stand praying, the first thing you must do is forgive. If you have ought against anyone. That's what Jesus said. So how did you see? He, he was Jesus. This, this was in Mark chapter 11. He was, he was talking about faith. See, so he says, if you say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and don't doubt in your heart. But believe that the things you say will come to pass. You shall have whatsoever you say. And then he now said that what, whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive it and you will have it. He says, whatever you desire, when you pray, believe that that thing you desire will be given to you. And you will have it. Then he now said in the next verse, when you stand praying, first thing you must do is forgive if you have ought in your heart against anyone. So, you go before the Lord and you may have even forgotten that you had a quarrel with someone yesterday and, and you, you may have forgotten. And then you go before the Lord and say, Lord, I want to pray about uh, this thing I, I want to receive today. Oh, thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, can you guide my mind? I, I need to know exactly how to pray concerning this. And then while you're saying all that, and then he says, hey, you've not forgiven that person. Hey, you have something in your heart against someone. Oh, 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 yesterday. Now, the option is yours. Am I willing to go through with the Lord for this thing I'm expecting? Or am I going to Nah, nah, no, 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 no. You said, you said, no, no, no. Forgive. So at that point, say, oh, Lord, thank you. Thank you, thank you. I, I, I forgive the person. I forgive the person. And then you think about it. Are you sure? Yeah, I do. Okay, you know what? I want to make it, put a call through to the person and talk to the person. And then you, you stop the prayer. Yes, you can. You stop the prayer. You can't pick up your phone. Call the person and say, hey, you know, I, I know we had this argument yesterday or last week. And since then, it's been, it's been in my heart. I didn't know. I didn't realize it until now. You know what? Please forgive me for holding this thing against you. And I forgive you also for what you did. Let's just function in the liberty of God's spirit. Praise God. Now, such things excite the spirit of God. Because you're walking in obedience to him. Now, I'm telling you something, when you function like that, you know, what, what, one of those prayer meetings we had, I was talking about the God of judgment. Listen, you need to listen to that message. We've made it available. You need to listen to it. Like he's a God of judgment. He loves judgment. Praise God. And, and, he, and that day, I remember that day, we prayed for quick judgment. We prayed for uh, is it quick judgment or fast judgment. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So the unity of the body is going to be when we as individuals connect ourselves with the Holy Spirit and listen to him indeed. Then we cannot have ought against one another. Then we cannot hurt and keep hurting one another. See, thank you, Holy Spirit. So John chapter 15, Jesus speaking here and he said, thank you, Holy Spirit. We are in verse 16 
John 15 and verse 16. It says, Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you. Hold on. We did not choose him. Nah, we didn't even know him to choose him. <laughs> Praise God. So we did not choose him. He chose us. And not only did he choose us, he ordained us. He poured oil on us. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah, he ordained you. And the reason for that ordination is that you should go and bring forth fruit. Now, Notice he used the word fruit, not fruits. I want you to understand. Now, in John, the whole book of John, Jesus talking about, he never mentioned fruits. He said fruit, singular, fruit. Now, even when he said much fruit, now he said, there's a reason for that, and I will go into it. Now he says, I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it you. So how does this work? He's called you. He chose you. He ordained you. And he says, your job for me, <laughs> praise God. He employed you. Your job for me is that you bear fruit and your fruit should remain. Praise God. Bear the fruit and let the fruit stay. Now, so I want to bear fruit. How do I know the fruits to bear? How do I know how to bear fruit? What is this fruit? Why did he use the word fruit and not fruits? See, if he's ordained us, he's ordaining us to go and bear fruit. It should be fruits. So most times we look at evangelism as the fruit. Not necessarily. I'll tell you what it is. And, and I'll take us to Galatians chapter Five. Now you know exactly where I'm going to praise God. Galatians chapter 5 and, and verse 22. Now notice Jesus says, I have ordained you to bear, go and bear fruit. And I told you something. I said we bear fruit because of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Because it's the Holy Spirit that connects us to the vine. See, he he is the connector. He brings us from wherever and then he plugs us into the vine who is Jesus. And then the same life flowing in Jesus is the same life flowing in us. What is that life? The Holy Spirit in us. Praise God. Now, he is the essence of life that is in us. But guess what? The fruit is born in the branches. But Jesus said, we are the branches. Now, how do I know the work of the Holy Spirit is taking place in my life? By the fruit that I bring forth. Now, he tells us here in, in Galatians 5.22, but the fruit of the Spirit. Notice also, he used the word singular, but the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit. Did he say the fruits? of the spirit he said the fruit of the spirit there's a reason he's calling it singular because the fruit is one fruit it's not many fruits that he's expecting from you it is one fruit but then he says but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace long-suffering gentleness goodness faith meekness temperance and then he says, against such, there is no law. Hear me. When you are bearing fruit, it says you become a, above the law. Hallelujah. Do you understand that? Now, 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 he said, the fruit. And then he begins to list 
All these things he is listing. So why did he say fruit? He says love, peace, joy, long suffering, gentleness, temperance. Why? Why did he list all these things? And then he says the fruit of the spirit. Praise God. We're going to go into this tomorrow and and trust the spirit of God. He's going to help us and dissect this thing and that you too will have perfect understanding and walk in the truth. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.